Hello and welcome to the fifth part of this register and user login tutorial. Um, oops, my bad. Uh, in this part, well in the last part we just finished up this register page and in this final part, well what should be the final part, um, depending on how long things take, we're going to finish up this um, login page. So, this login page, like the register page, it's cleared of PHP code, but in here there is some HTML. Um, if we go to the page, you can see that it's, an, again, it's a form that self-submits. It just submits to this page, doesn't do anything right now. Uh, the form, again, is post, and it has uh, five inputs, one text for the username, one password for the password, a checkbox for the um, cookie and a submit button to submit the form. So sorry, that's four um, inputs and they all just have a basic label on them. That's about it. You guys can copy that out and then we'll get started on the PHP. So up at the top of the page again, first thing that we do is include the core folder er, file, so core init.inc.php and then we're going to go on to the form handling so again first thing to see is if the form has been submitted so we're going to check if is set and we're going to have to check for the post username and password um, because we don't check for the cookie because the cookie is not required to be set so username post password and then we'll open up and close our code block so Assuming that it's been set, we are going to go and start checking on the username. First thing to check is if it is empty. So empty username. Let's just make sure that they actually have a value set. Username. And again, we're going to use the errors array. So errors is equal to um, please enter a username. And then we're going to do the same for the password. Now, just as I do this, bear in mind that um, this uh, code is just rough framework for you to use. Um, like, as I was talking about when we were uh, coding out the init file and about disallowing access to the login and such. Um, this code right here is just to suit my needs for this, which is to show you the functions you need to log in. Um, so these kind of checks right here, if you have other checks that you want to perform, go ahead and do that. I strongly suggest that there were other checks being performed, especially for the register. And if you're not going to disallow access to pages or whatever, um, cater it to your own needs. So don't think that this code can just be or it should just this code should not just be copied and pasted into your uh, website necessarily it should be um, altered so it fits what you need it to do uh, and in case you have questions about that uh, I'm always free if you inbox or leave comments on the video or whatever you need I can get back to you about the whatever you need to cater it to your own needs but because I can't uh, cater it to everyone's needs in a video I just I'm trying to provide basic structures that you guys have something to work from so next thing to check is if the errors are empty because those are the only two actual checks we're gonna do on the login so if empty errors which means that up to this point there have been no errors we're then going to use the valid information uh, function that we created so if valid information you remember the first um, field or the first parameter was the username so post username and the second one was the encrypted password so SHA1 um, and we're gonna do the SHA1 hash of an MD5 hash of the password and so we're gonna say if valid information is equal to false meaning that there was no user, or it didn't log in properly. We're going to uh, give another error to the errors array. 
and that error is just going to say um, your username or password was invalid. Now, assuming that it doesn't return false, so in the else block, um, this means that their information has been uh, validated and they, are, they need to be logged in. So, the first thing to do before we log them in is to see if they want to be continued to log in. All right, so if they click the remember me checkbox. So to do that, we're going to say if is set post cookie. And if that is true, then we're going to set two cookies. If it is not true, or then um, we're just going to continue with the regular login. So in order to set a cookie, we use the set cookie uh, function. It has three required parameters. It may have more, but um, first one is the name of the cookie, so that's username. Second one is the um, value of the cookie, which we're going to have as the HTML entities. Did I spell that right? HTML entities. Yeah, of post username, just as some protection for this as you will be you may be displaying the cookie as it is unless no wait maybe do I check it do I do we do this in the function let us see in the function no we do not so I have to do it here okay because I didn't do HTML entities in the function because it's not necessarily required it is best to do it now just to prevent any XSS injection plus it can't harm so then the final parameter is the expiry time. So a uh, cookie can't actually technically be um, never ending. I mean, you can have it so that every time the user comes back, assuming the cookie is still set, you reset it so that it is always being set and the date will infinitely be pushed back. But um, for the, the scope of this tutorial, I'm just going to set it for 20 years in the future. So in order to do this, we're going to have the time, which gives us the current time, plus, and then it's the number of seconds. So instead of actually calculating the number of seconds, what we're going to do is 60 seconds times 60 hours times um, 24, or times 60 minutes times 24 hours uh, times 365 times 20. Now I don't know if that's the actual math. You have 60 seconds to a, a minute, 60 minutes to an hour, 24 hours to a day, 365 days to a year, 20 years to 20 years, but whatever, that's a long time regardless and yeah. Okay, so that's that cookie set. Now we're gonna set the cookie for the password. So it's the same deal, except um, this middle or the value of it is going to be the encrypted password. So that's the SHA1 of the MD5 of the password. Okay, and then the final parameter again is the time. So we're going to give it the same time thing or 60 times 60 times 24 times 365 times 20. And I mean, you could just give it like this kind of thing. But, whatever, we're going to go with this. Again, like I was saying, uh, cater it to your own needs. So, after we set those cookies, if they need to be set, we're going to set the session, which we just do by like a regular variable definition. So, session username is equal to HTML, or MySQL, real escape string, no, I do that in every function. I just need to do the HTML entities. Uh, post username. Because we use, in each of our functions, we always um, escape, we don't actually need to do that. Because any time that it will be accessing with a database, it will have been escaped. So, and then after we've done uh, the variable or the session starting, we're going to redirect them to the um, user page, so user.php, and we're going to kill the script using exit. And 
that's the top logic for the um, login. Now, for just like in the register, we have to display errors if they are. Luckily, it's done in the exact same way, so you can just hop over into your register page and copy and paste this code right into here. And that should be good. So let's hop back and try for errors. Um, we will fresh no syntax errors, which is good. Let's just click the login. Please enter a username. Please enter a password. Now let's go Dylan and just a random password. Uh, your username or password is invalid. And let's just now log in properly. Log in. You see, we go to the user.php, which is the file we're going to be working on right now. Uh, if you recall correctly, it was just a very basic page. Um, it is going to be, or it can be um, made into what would normally be a user or profile page or whatever, but for now, all we're going to do is include the core, forward slash init, inc.php, and then we're just going to say echo welcome space session if I could type username and then down here we're gonna have a link to the logout page so um, a ref is equal to logout.php and then that's just going to say logout so we'll save all this and refresh and you can see we have welcome Dylan log out. Um, so finally we're going to go into this logout page and the logout page again it's a pretty uh, simple page to code. Uh, first things first we're going to include our core so core forward slash init dot ink dot php and then we're going to have session destroy which kills the session and then um, in case session destroy fails as a fail safe we will say unset session so now the session has been ended and in case they have cookies set we want to unset them the way you unset a cookie is you set a new cookie for the same like uh, the same name of the cookie except you set it in the past what I mean by this is set cookie and we're gonna set username uh, it's going to be a blank value just in case um, it fails to set in the past that way it won't pass validation in the first place so yeah and then we're going to have time minus and then we're going to set it 20 years in the past so 60 times 60 times 24 times 365 times 20 and then we're going to do the same for password so um, it's a little bit weird to unset a cookie because they don't have an unset function but this is the accepted method for setting it um, in the past or to, for unsetting it rather you set it to the past 365 and 20 and then finally we're going to header to the login page location login.php and we're going to save that. Now uh, there's no need to exit after that because it's the end of the script. So we're going to test this out now so we'll refresh here and we'll click log out. Now we'll try and go back to the user page and you can see we get redirected here so let's log back in um, what a test right? Yeah login and you can see we get back here now if we try to go to the login page you can see we get directed back to there. Same with if we try to go to the register, we get redirected back to here. So let's log out again. And then just to um, show that the cookie is working, we're gonna add some code in here that you would never have in your actual file, but it, um, it helps demonstrate. So first what we're gonna do is echo the pre tag, just P-R-E. And what this does is it preserves white space which just um, allows when you print r or something, print underscore r, it uh, allows it to be in a nice formatted way. So then what we're going to do is after that, 
echo out um, cookie with a colon and then print underscore r uh, the cookie array and then we're going to echo out session and then underneath that we're going to print underscore r the session array and we'll refresh this and then we're going to log back in just again as we have been and you can see that the cookie has these um, browser set cookies but it doesn't have any set by our server it's, there's no username or password cookie uh, however in the sessions array we have our session username set to Dylan so we're gonna log out again and this time we're gonna log back in except select the remember me and we're gonna click log in and now you can see in this cookie array there's a username and password along with the username in the sessions array so that just shows that the um, cookie and session are setting properly um, so yeah, that's basically it for the tutorial. Um, one other little tip that I can add in now is if I were to enter the username Dylan and then enter a false password, click login, uh, you get your username or password is invalid, but all the information here is cleared. What you can do is, um, we'll go back to the login and scroll down to the form. So this is the one for the username. Right now it doesn't have a value, it has a blank value. And um, so what we're gonna do in this value is open up a PHP tag, close it, and just say if is set um, dollar underscore post username. And open up our curly brackets and close them. And then we're just going to say echo HTML entities of the post username and that's going to be it and then what this will do is let's go back to this page oops on line 48 which would be this one obviously if is set oh forgot a closing bracket there refresh continue unexpected on line 48 okay uh, HTML entities. Oh, it's because the closing bracket went all the way over there. We don't want it over there. Refresh once more. There we go. So now if we enter Dylan and a false password, log in, you can see that Dylan stays there. Um, yeah. You could do a similar thing with your register, especially if you have a lot more fields, it becomes helpful. Um, oops, refresh, continue. There we go. Um, but other than that, that should be fully functioning. So, I don't remember if I touched on this in another uh, part of this tutorial or not, but this really gives you the basis for a um, user system. So, what I mean by that is profile pages, um, private messaging, wall-to-wall -wall chat, that sort of thing. Uh, login and register is really the basics of all of this. So. If you guys are interested in me uh, making other tutorials in this sense, so for instance a private messaging tutorial or a user page tutorial or um, an avatar uploading tutorial or anything along those lines, um, I'd really appreciate it if you let me know in the comments or sending me a message um, on YouTube and just say, yeah, like that'd be awesome or no thank you, whatever, just so I can uh, know if, if that's what you guys want because it's tr they are often suggested for other video maker people but I mean I do not have the largest following so I'm not sure if that's what whoever is watching these videos however many of their them are however many of you there are like 13 or whatever um, if that's what you guys want or if there's something else you want so please let me know and I will try and do my best to cater for that uh, thanks for watching and let me know if you need anything thank you